O Wisdom of the Middle Way. Nagarjuna's Mulamadhyamakarika. Translation and Commentary by J. L. Garfield. Chapter 7 Examination of the Conditioned. Having begun the text with an examination of the relation of dependency between phenomena, and having then conducted an analysis of the fundamental ontological constituents of reality, Nagarjuna now brings these two analyses together in a long chapter investigating the nature of the world of conditioned things as a whole. The target position is the view that dependent arising itself, as well as dependently arisen things, are either inherently existent or completely non-existent. There are really two positions here with which Nagarjuna must contend. First, the reificationist opponent charges that even if we grant Nagarjuna's earlier arguments for the conclusion that phenomena themselves are empty because they are dependently arisen, dependent arising itself must inherently exist. For only if phenomena are truly dependently arisen, one might argue, are they truly empty? Second, Nagarjuna must answer the following objection, if dependent arising is empty, then arising, stasis, and cessation are non-existent. Hence there are, in fact, no phenomena since phenomena are defined particularly in a Buddhist context as those things that arise, remain, and cease. But clearly, there are actual empirical phenomena. Indeed, such phenomena must exist for Nagarjuna's claim that they are empty to make any sense at all. How can this be reconciled with the emptiness of dependent arising? 1. If arising were produced, then it would also have the three characteristics. If arising is not produced, how could the characteristics of the produced exist? The three characteristics in question are arising, stasis, and cessation. On a standard Buddhist view, all phenomena come into being in dependence upon conditions, remain in existence dependent upon conditions, and cease to exist dependent upon conditions. This is the core of the two central doctrines of dependent arising and impermanence. Nagarjuna here poses a problem. If dependent arising itself were produced by conditions, then it itself would have these three characteristics and, apparently paradoxically, be impermanent. This is prima facie paradoxical just because if dependent arising is impermanent, it would appear that sometimes things don't arise dependently, which contradicts the thesis that all phenomena are dependently arisen. Moreover, as Nagarjuna will argue below, this assertion threatens a vicious regress. If arising arises, there must already be a rising in virtue of which it does so. But, Nagarjuna asks in the third and fourth lines, if dependent arising is not produced, where did it come from? If one were to say that dependent arising were not produced and, hence, that it does not depend for its existence on anything else, this would appear to contradict the thesis that everything arises dependently. Dependent arising itself would then be the counterexample to the thesis. 2. If the three, arising, etc., are separate, they cannot function as the characteristics of the produced. But how could they be joined? In one thing, simultaneously? These three characteristics, if they characterize the phenomenon of dependent arising itself, must either be present separately or together. This furnishes the basis of a destructive dilemma. If they are separate, then some parts of dependent arising have one of the three, some another. Some are arising, some abiding, some ceasing. But this is problematic since all phenomena are said to arise, to abide, and to cease. So it would seem to be the case that if dependent arising itself has all three of these characteristics, it cannot have them separately, but must have them jointly and simultaneously. But the three characteristics could not be present simultaneously since they are mutually contradictory. At any one point, dependent arising could have only one of them. 
The same thing cannot be in the same sense, at the same time arising and ceasing when these are understood in the sense at issue here, that introduced by the substantialist opponent. It is important in order to understand this argument to keep the dialectical context firmly in mind. The opponent throughout the text, whether on the nihilist side or on the reificationist side, considers existence to be inherent existence and predication to be the ascription of really existent properties to substantial bases. For the opponent Nagarjuna has in mind here, dependent arising if it is the nature of things that all must inherently exist. It must therefore have the three characteristics inherently. To have a characteristic inherently is to have it essentially. But then dependent arising, for the opponent, would have a contradictory set of essential properties. 3. If arising, abiding, and ceasing have characteristics other than those of the produced, there would be an infinite regress. If they don't, they would not be produced. The other possibility is that dependent arising has some other characteristics, that is, characteristics other than those that all phenomena have in virtue of being dependently arisen. But we could then ask about the characteristics of those characteristics. Do those characteristics arise, abide, or perish? If so, the original regress has not been stopped. Another possibility is that arising, abiding, and perishing do not have characteristics at all. But if not, then they are not phenomena in any ordinary sense at all. While that would cut off the regress, it would do so without achieving any explanation or any analysis of the kind originally sought, and would leave an uncomfortable paradox. We started seeking an understanding of dependent arising as inherently existent. But its inherent existence requires the inherent existence of arising, cessation, and stasis, all of which now come out to be ontologically sui generis. The further paradox is this, for dependent arising to exist inherently, these three should turn out to be essential properties of all phenomena. But on the alternative under consideration, they are not properties at all. We might, of course, try to extend this horn of the dilemma by suggesting that although arising, abiding, and ceasing are not phenomena in the ordinary sense, they are characteristics of some special kind. We then seem to have a more curious regress, new ad hoc characteristics arise at each level of analysis. The regress here is an interesting one because its viciousness consists not in the same basis being required for each putatively basic posit, but in there being no principle available to determine a basis for any putative basic posit despite a principle that urges that there must be one. The point that Nagarjuna is after, of course, is that this principle itself, that there must be an explanatory basis, an independent entity that has characteristics, as an explanation of the occurrence of any characteristic is what generates the regress and must be rejected. There is, of course, a third alternative. These three might neither have characteristics different from those possessed by ordinary phenomena or have no characteristics at all. They might indeed have the very trio of characteristics that all ordinary phenomena have, namely, arising, abiding, and ceasing. It is this alternative that occupies Nagarjuna for the remainder of the chapter. This alternative is interesting dialectically in that, on the one hand, it represents the most natural way to approach an analysis of dependent arising, namely, by consistently predicating it of.